And uh, we are back here at 707, and as promised, in the studio this morning with us is uh, City Councilman Massengale, uh, here to tell us uh, about the going on last night of the City Council meeting. Good morning. Good morning. Councilman. How's it going? Well, so far so good. Yep. Yep. Seems to be a pretty mild morning temperature-wise, and... Uh, was it mild? We had a pretty mild city mild council, council meeting too? last Good. night. Good. Uh, Good. Temperatures weren't rising. We um, <laughs> we discussed uh, y'all. Y'all were discussing pedestrian traffic when I walked in off the air, and it, coincidentally, we talked about a master plan last night that uh, applies to pedestrian and bicycle traffic in our city. It's something that um, uh, our MPO has has worked on, and uh, it's it's interesting when you look at it and. And and as our city has developed, we we haven't always planned well for pedestrian and bicycle traffic. And this is more than just what you see around Texas Tech. This is, you know, we we even are, are looking at what we consider complete street models, where every time we build a street, we'll take in consideration bicycle and pedestrian traffic, which we haven't done that in the past. And um, so there are some recommendations that come out of this study. It's a, as you can imagine, it's a, you know, it's a fairly thick document. We don't get a study down at City Hall. It's not <laughs> fairly thick, but, um, you know, I, I, I thought it was interesting that it called for, uh, for example, a pedestrian bridge over Memphis on Loop 289. And I thought about that, and, um, you know, there, you know, you, you go down the loop. We, you know, and you see people trying to get over the loop. Yeah. We've all seen this. Yeah, you know, crazy. Now, we can't convince, and we know we can't educate everybody, but there needs to be a, a better way for pedestrians to travel across. And so they've identified Memphis as that potential area you could go essentially from a park to a park. Uh, you know, is that a funded project? No, that's a very expensive project. But that was well, just— Well, why, why Memphis? Well, I don't know. I haven't studied it in depth, but that that's that's they've studied it and that's been their recommendation. Because I live right there. At, well, I grew up right there in Melanie Park and I know that area well. Yeah. I was thinking back when we were kids we used to go under. Yeah. I mean if we had if we had friends at Melanie Park exactly. South, our bikes, we would we would, exactly. we would go into and the I, stormwater. I was uh, in Melanie stuff. Park and Landon used to ride his bike from uh, underneath yeah. and go over to to see his friends at over in Melanie Park. Yeah, we Melanie all, Park. Yeah, he and I are probably close to the same age. So, um, yeah, we that's that's how you got across, <laughs> you know. But uh, I, I think it's important to take a look at it. I, you know, there are more and more people that that's how they travel, whether that is the way they travel or whether for recreation. I think it's important for our community as we grow to look at that. Hmm. Well, also the the. Looking at KCBD.com this morning, and their story says a few of the items in the, was uh, included in the 2018-2019 budget, the purchase of, of furniture for Citizens Tower. Um, but, 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 but what was the, let's see, the furniture was, what, $3 million? Yes. That's a lot of furniture, isn't it? It is, but you've got, you know, it's 188,000 square feet, so, you know, it's... Uh, uh, but don't they already have furniture? There is some, you know, this is furniture program for the new space. And, uh, this is all when we approved this budget for the tower back in, oh, so be what, 17, uh, this would have been one of the line items that we would have discussed at this time. So this is just final approval. This is not new. This is not a surprise. This falls right still with them. And when we talk about we're on budget with citizens tower, this is still within budget. And, um, the, the actually the budget line item for this we came in under so we didn't even run over on furniture. Yeah, they got to sit down, Dave. They can't sit on milk crates over there. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> how is how's the tower coming along? I, I, I've heard you mention it'll open in November. Ta- tower is uh, uh, on schedule. We'll begin move in on November one. If you're downtown very much, uh, you can. Yeah visually uh, observe the progress uh, uh, I got a report yesterday that uh, the construction pace continues to quicken over there so um, we're looking forward to uh, uh, getting it complete right I, I guess it's dried in isn't it oh yeah and so oh we're painting yeah. walls painting walls huh? yeah yeah well, we, you know bathrooms have tile uh, we but we're, they're at a point now that uh, they're really moving and we're hoping the 
there's, there's two personnel elevators inside of it and a service elevator, and, and we're really looking forward to getting those things up and live so that things can move even faster. Well, another thing that you, you talked about last night was uh, a high water detection and warning system for McKenzie Park. Uh, will manually close traffic arms and activate flashing signal lights to keep traffic from crossing the roadway if it's flooded. Jeez, is that really a problem? Well, there are some places over at McKenzie that flood, and, um, you know, you were talking about pedestrians that don't... There are people that don't know how to handle the... Okay. Yeah, they, they've actually had to rescue people over there, the fire department, uh, these boneheads going to play golf and you know i love playing golf it's a great two great courses over there but as yeah. you as you get off the frontage road by the highway and you go into the park there's there's a dip and it goes down through you know where where the riverbed is and uh when we get a lot of rain that floods and you get these people who think they can gun it across uh you know and the water's coming across <laughs> at 65 pounds per square inch you know, at 40 miles an hour and the cars get stuck and the fire department, then they got to come risk their lives and get the guy who's on top of the hood of his car or the top of his car from yeah, drowning. Yeah, that's you know? true. It so floods a, a couple different yeah. places over there. Yeah. Um, we were laughing about uh, the parks guy, Ron Gallagher. I think Ron Gallagher, I yeah. think is his name, is talking about how you can eat the fish in the Playa Lake. Oh. He was talking about that last night. <laughs> On K Mac and Dave and I were laughing about that. I'm like, I don't know about eating the fish yeah. out of those lakes. You're talking about yeah. high water and the uh, rivers around. Here. Lot, you so. know, there's a lot of people in the, the. We get a lot of fishing activity in our lakes. I, I, like he's talking about eating them. I, I know. Like, what? Well, there, yeah, I'm sure people no, do. I'm telling you, man. There's there's a lot of stuff that runs off into that lake. <laughs> I remember. Well, I used to growing up over there. I used to fish that lake over at Leroy Elmore. And, a lot of people, you know, I was I was I was a big believer in catch and release, yeah. but yeah. you weren't bringing them home. There's a lot of people that were bringing them home. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big believer in not in getting them at United. <laughs> That's what I, I don't want to. I've decided I don't want a slimy fish in my hands. I don't even want to catch them. Unless well, there's a lot of catch and eat them. How's the how is how's the budget coming overall? Great like, question, yeah. Matt. Uh, so budget starts next week, and uh, I believe we've got three. Intense days. Uh, we start that on um, Monday, and the, the, our sessions start at three thirty, and we'll run for three hours. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we hope that we can work through the entire budget during that time. That will be broadcast and open to the public. And I would, uh, if you have questions or concerns about the budget, I would encourage you to reach out to your uh, council person. And we'll be happy to respond. Uh, so we're looking forward to hearing what management has to present and uh, working through that budget. Let's take a, a break here at 7.15 a.m. Uh, KFYL Mornings with Matt and Dave. Councilman Mass and Gale will return after this. News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM. This is KFYO Mornings. Dave King, Matt Martin, and bus subbing for Matt this week is Matt Crow. Uh, we are broadcasting from the Thacker Jewelry Studio. You can see that custom collection at 6120 82nd Street in Lubbock. We have a texture, and I, uh, and I do want to remind you that our text lines are open if you have a question for the city councilman. 806-680-2790 is our number, our text line. Uh, but we also, there's some people that like to email us, and you may do that if you would like. It's mornings at kfyofm.com. Uh, well, Councilman, uh, we have a texture that says, Mr. Massengale is my council member. I'm concerned about the city wanting to increase the tax rate two cents on top of the one cent increase last year and on top of the increased appraisal values last year and this year. So the texter is referring to the three cents that's related to the public safety improvements project. This is a decision that was made um, now really a couple of years ago. Uh, they are correct. We took one penny uh, last year, and that is specifically for, uh, let's remind everybody, to replace the police headquarters, build three substations, build a new property warehouse and crime lab and the municipal court, uh, which would, is in the same building as 
police is today. Um, you know, our police infrastructure, if you'd ever been through it or seen it, was is severely outdated. And many councils have attempted to uh, uh, find a solution, and, and they have not been able to. And so this is where we came to the point. And, and I also remind the texter that the council was split on how to take uh, those pennies. There were some of us that wanted to take it to a vote, other people, and we were, and but the majority of the council felt like they should go ahead and, and um, take the, um, the the three pennies and uh, fund the project. Yeah, we have a, another texture that wants to know if the furniture was purchased locally. It was. Oh, that's good. Local vendor. Um. You know, on the police substations, you, you mentioned the the building. I, I think it's important to point out, too, you know, what a morale buster that must have been or, and continues to be for the police around here. I mean, who wants to work in a dump? You know, and I, I, well, I just, I, I just I, you know, and, and, and I, I get it. Things cost money and so on and so forth. But, you know, you can't have it both ways. You know, you want the police to be efficient and you want them to be there when you need them. But you can't expect them to work in the, in dumps. You know, I, I, I just, and, and I think for a long time, as the councilman indicated that things had kind of slid, uh, with, with the police facilities and, and, and now they're going to improve dramatically. And I think that's got to be good for morale because I mean, you know, nobody likes to go to work when the ceilings are falling in and there's black mold and, and so on and so forth. Elevators don't work. Yeah. I mean, well, come on, you know, and, I mean, and the is. configuration of space. I mean, <clears throat> All organizations change and, and use space differently or uh, technology develops and you, you have different needs. Uh, you know, but the other thing strategically is as we grow as a community and we implement what we've termed as community policing, um, we have a property crime issue. All communities do, but we've got ours and we've got to work on it. And this is one very important tool uh, that we can arm our law enforcement with to keep on hammering on property crime. And I, yeah, and I'm, I'm with you a hundred percent on that. And I, off the mic, I was telling the councilman that, uh, what a great thing it is for the police doing their outreach. A few weeks ago in our neighborhood, they had their command post set up and you could walk over there and talk to the police officers and the end of the, I guess they call them division commanders that the fellow who is actually in charge of that area. And sit down with them and talk to them about, you know, what can I do to help you? What can you do to help me? But, um, you know, regardless of uh, – sometimes I think we get a little wound up in the costs of things. And it's, it's important that we spend money properly and, and, and keep the taxpayer first and foremost. But at the same time, you know, the, the, the police are just like you and I. And, and they've got to be treated respectfully. And they need to be – in places that are clean. If you go in in one of the new fire stations or any of the fire stations in this town, you could eat off the floor. Mm-hmm. I mean, the firemen keep those places spick and span. They take pride in the in the the equipment. They take pride in the facility. They take pride in the outside of the facility. And I, you know, so you know, the police aren't any different. I mean, they're 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 proud to to work as a police officer. And I think. You know, it's not like they they sit around the office all day anyway. But I mean, you've got detectives and you've got support personnel and administrative personnel, and you know, those are the people that take your complaints and uh, take reports and help you find stolen items and and help you get in touch with with the, the appropriate people in the police force. And you know, you don't want them working in places that are terrible. I mean, that that yeah. just isn't. It's not fair for one. And number two, I, I want the people who are in charge of protecting us and as, as councilman mousingale indicated that you know get after the property crime perpetrators and the kids you know busting in the cars and stuff but yeah. you know they gotta they gotta have the facilities to do that and, and the stuff's got to be modern i mean it can't be antiquated and old well and we've we've planned these facilities to 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 live for 20 30 years we tried to look as far into the future as we can but i understand the texture's position i don't want my taxes going up either um, but remember, most of your property tax that you pay to the city, most of it goes for fire and police. And for you know, I think that's why we can stand up and and justify what we're doing for public safety. Yeah, got it. Uh, coming up on seven twenty nine this morning again, uh, KFYO mornings with Dave and Matt Crow, 
and Councilman Massengill uh, discussing the city council meeting last night. A uh, quick break here, and we'll be back with more after this. And we are back here on KFYO Mornings with Dave King and uh, Matt Crowsubbing for Matt Martin. Here it is, 7.35 a.m. Our uh, temperature, are very, very cool, 63 degrees. High today, uh, expected to be about 88 on this 24th day of July. And Councilman uh, Massengill in the house with us uh, discussing all things the city. We have a... T- caller this morning who said uh is the new parking garage part of the original budget the parking garage that we've talked about that will uh, be built on the complex where the tower is police lpnl municipal court is uh will be part of the what we call pcip public safety improvement projects budget yeah Another texture this morning is asking if there any consideration being given to the removal of the brick streets downtown. If not, why not? I'm I'm telling you, my wife and I were driving. It's a down, great. That's a great. That's that's we a were, great question. We were and driving down uh, Broadway here just a few days ago, and I'm telling you, it's like it's it, you just take a beating. Uh, I those, that those was part of the charm. What? It is. I yeah, that was, yeah, part of the charm. That, that was charming. A... That was charming back forty years ago. It was real charming. Yeah, it's the charm has left, in my opinion. They well, are no longer some, charming. There are some big holes, and uh, <laughs> the, the caller makes a great point. And uh, there's not a plan, and but and plans cost money, and uh, but it's it's something that I hope in the near future, and that may be part have to be part of a. Maybe there'll be an appetite sometime for some uh, transportation bond. I don't know, but um, that's something that um, we've got to have a plan for. Another texture this morning asked, Councilman, will the trigger election cap harm your ability to govern the city? I think we're going to be able to uh, work within the cap. I, I, you know, that, well, I guess we might get some kind of glimpse on if there, there will be any issues during this budget session next week, but I don't think we anticipate um, issues. Another texture, apparently not a fan of Greg Stevens. Uh, says now that he's gone, says why are we building a substation one and a half miles from the new station? Well, you know they all serve their own functions. That there's those there's the city's divided up into uh, sections or that's not quadrants. It's three three areas, but uh, each one of those are strategically placed to serve those areas. And then you still got HQ downtown, but those two buildings that close, if they're a mile and a half apart, which I that sounds correct, that they, they serve different functions. Well, are you a fan of the substation concept? I am. I'm very much. I've publicly supported it many times. So how, how is, um, and, and you know, I have no expertise in the area and, and, and given it not a lot of thought. But uh, how is that going to be beneficial? The, the substations. Well, it it keeps the police in your in in the area that they serve and they'll 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 start and stop from there ever on every shift and if you have an issue and you know if you live in south lubbock i, I think you said you did no. um you know you're not going to go downtown if you have an issue you're going to go you're going to go over to the sergeant's desk at the south substation okay and that's the whole goal is to keep those officers closer more time in, in the area yeah in their and, beat and this is all a function of, uh, you know, we have more prime crimes than property crimes. I'm not, but I am focused on property crimes. I'm personally concerned with property crimes. And um, I expect this in- investment to be one of the most important things that we do to affect our property crimes. I think I, over the weekend, I think there was a story on car the- thefts. We we have a car theft problem here. I mean, there's there's no... I don't even think we need to sugarcoat it. We have a problem. Man, and, you know, this is something that amazes me, too, because with the new technology in, in cars, I mean, it, it, it's they're so hard to steal. But I not mean, if you leave your door unlocked with your key in it. Well, yeah. Which is most of the well, problem. But, but that doesn't make it right to steal it. But, you know, I, you know, rear-entry garages and people leave their keys in their cars. Yeah. yeah and we, it's, yeah, it's yeah. easy to hide and steal them. And people steal the cream out of your coffee if you let them. I mean, you, you, oh, well, you've got it. You've got no to be responsible. You can't leave your garage door open. You yeah. can't leave your car unlocked. And, again, we were talking about this earlier off mic that, you know, you've got uh, 
drug addicts who will try the car handles every night to see if you left your, your door open. Yeah. And they'll get inside your car and they'll ransack the, it and see if you know, there's a dollar. Yeah. You know, there's a dollar. Grab a dollar. There's your gun, you know, in the glove compartment. Grab that and they'll they'll sell that to somebody for yeah. drug money. But mm-hmm. uh, but, but I'm I'm uh, you know I thought it was a great idea from Chief Stevens. I I thought he knew what he was doing, and um, I don't think this was a lark on the on the point of the police or the council to put the substations out there. Uh, we can argue back and forth about how it was funded and all financed and so on and so forth. But the, the fact remains that the councilman's right. I mean, the police spend a lot of time driving back and forth to headquarters. Yeah, I exactly. mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, you see cops, I mean, at, at the change of the shifts and stuff, it's like the bees coming back to the nest. And what, what's going on is is that the police are coming in to change shifts. Well, then there's nobody out there at 113th mm-hmm. and slide. Well, you know? well, and to your point, a continuation of it's not funded in this plan, but long term we hope to have some type of holding facility in South Lubbock so that um, – that may be co-used by other law enforcement agencies because we spend a lot of time, pick somebody, say there's a shoplifter at the mall. They get picked up. Where do we take them? Out, out to the airport. Oh, jail's really? at the airport. Or, well, you it, mean when the policeman? I mean, the jail's not at the airport, but the jail is out near the airport. So you mean to tell me when, when a policeman arrest and cuffs a shoplifter every at time, the mall, he, every dr- he drives them to the jail? Yeah, now, so now, now we're built. We're trying to build that. efficiencies, and yeah, that happens every time. So, are, are they going Takes to have to the holdings, county jail? Are they going to have holding cells in each of the? No, but we we hope that at some point we can fund, and we've talked to the county, to DPS. We hope school districts. We hope we think there's a need for a cooperative detention center that. For example, I guess you'd call it the paddy wagon would swing by once a day, pick them all up, and then ship them to the county jail. But we spend a lot of time transporting uh, people that are arrested back and forth. Well, that's a long that's a long way from from West Lubbock. It's a long way to the jail. And think about this: when the outside loop is built, eighty eight, and all that development is going to. I mean, we, you and I probably won't live to see it. The councilman will, but I mean, all that development down there south of town. And that outside loop, that's going to create congestion. That's going to create businesses and more people living out there. And what's that going to? That's going to mean a little bit more crime, yeah. probably. Let's, so, yeah, I think let, thinking ahead is the right thing to do. You let's take to, a quick break here on Cap Wild Mornings with Matt and Dave. Uh, come back and talk about uh, the uh, depot parking. Yeah, great. Okay, and we are back. Seven forty-seven a.m. here on KFW mornings with Matt and Matt Crow and, and Dave King, and uh, we've got Councilman Massengale. Uh, we wanted to talk about the uh, depot district parking regulations. So that was another item on our agenda last so, n- night, and um, it's something that got tabled from a meeting in June because we had a hearing and some c- some citizens uh, made some comments on it, and there are. Parking requirements that go with a business that serves alcohol that requires you to have so many parking spaces. Well, in downtown, that doesn't work anymore. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm not for, personally, I can speak for myself on this, I'm not for any type of restriction that would keep a business from being able to go in. And I think that area, um, there was also a separation requirement of 600 feet. And so, what we did last night is we started the process to eliminate the parking requirement and eliminate the separation. And this is for businesses related to uh, wineries, uh, microbreweries. Uh, there are place, other places that serve alcohol, but to further encourage investment and, and revitalization down into that area. How are things in the depot district speaking about, you know, crime and so forth? There seemed to be a little bit yeah. more down there than usual last year. And with school coming back in session, any thoughts on that? Um, you know, we've had um, some bad actors down there. Um, the depot district needs to be family safe. Uh, uh, luckily, we haven't had any incidents lately. I don't want to. Jinx, jinx that situation, but uh, our our police have done a very good job in in working on the problem areas, and uh, so I 
think at this point we see some improvement. We'll continue to work on that. I, you know, from a safety perspective, I, I could probably support at some point in time routinely closing the streets around the depot district, much like you might see in some other communities. Um, I, I think there's some hesitation at this point in time on some of the business owners, but I'll continue to push for that. Well, I mean, they do it farmer's market. They close the streets yeah. down there. I mean, everybody seems to keep their shirt on for that. So, yeah, and I think, you know, police walking around uh, there on the weekends probably is a big help, too. Yeah, um, and we have hor- uh, we have officers on horseback that I think spend some time down there. So we're uh, working on it. When you see the size of some of these college kids uh, walking around, I, if I was a police officer, I'd want – more than one or two of my police officer friends walking around with me. Yeah. Because some of those kids get pretty big and they, they start drinking and yeah. holy cow. Yeah, they become King Kong. Kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have a texture that says, I truly believe those substations will cut down on crime. I like the idea that the police will be more visible in the neighborhood. We're having a lot of car break-ins in South and Southwest and North Lubbock. People are breaking into back windows of SUVs and stealing items. The roads in downtown can wait. I don't ever go there anymore. <laughs> well, well, we hope one day you might. Well, we no kidding, you do. And I, there's not a bigger proponent in Lubbock than than me when it comes to uh, revitalizing downtown Lubbock. It's just something we've got to do. We've got to raise that thing from the dead, and I think we're doing a pretty good job of it. Which which brings up again one of the most contentious issues that we've talked about on this show has been the donation of the millions of dollars from LIDA, Lubbock Economic Development, to uh, put South Plains College, or make it possible, I guess, for South Plains College to acquire the old city hall building down there on Q. I guess, what is it, 14th right. and Q? Yeah, L- uh, LIDA's grant is, has, for the rem- is going to help with the remodel. South Plains College is actually purchasing the building on their own. Well, yeah, potato, potato. But, sure, I understand. But... Uh, is uh, your thoughts on that? Do you think that that was a uh, I think that's a wise well spent? I do, and, and let me tell you why. First of all, we uh, are the largest city in Texas that doesn't have a downtown academic community college presence. Okay, uh, it's it's part of um, what our downtown could be. It's also part of it's a function of providing access to education to those that might not otherwise have access some you know you might live if I'll, I'll use a resident in east lubbock as an example there's there's residents like this all over but you know texas tech could be as far as ne- the university is of nebraska or the level land campus could be that far out of reach for some of those folks so um we'll use their the, their technology campus the south plains college opened up on avenue q is already at capacity quickly and um, the other thing that this is important for is workforce. We constantly hear from employers that are here and that want to move here is that the, the key is workforce and workforce training. And this will serve that purpose as well as during these discussions, we got in a room with Texas Tech and South Plains College and uh, we're very encouraged by the fact of the increased partnership of those two educational institutions and what that could do for them and our community. So in my mind, it's a win. Hmm. Every time I've driven by the uh, the the Q, the Q Street or uh, Avenue Q, rather, campus, uh, that parking lot at, at the SPC building is full. Yeah, yeah. Well, that about uh, wraps it up. We're up against the clock, Councilman. So glad, uh, always glad to have you out. Glad to come. Um, we are at seven, coming up on seven fifty-four a.m. here on KFL Mornings with Matt and Dave. A quick break, and we'll be back with more. <laughs> 